Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. J'aimerais tout d'abord souhaiter la bienvenue au chef d'État major de la défense des pays de l'OTAN et au commandant stratégique réuni, réuni aujourd'hui pour la première réunion du comité militaire en session des chefs d'État major de la défense de 2019. I would also this morning particularly like to welcome three new members of the military committee to the Chief of Defence Staff community and family. Major General Martin Herum from Estonia. Martin, a very warm welcome to our, uh, shall I say, club. And uh, we, we very much look forward to working with you as you uh, become the Chief of Defence. General Enzo Vecchirelli from Italy. Enzo, my friend, nice to see you. Swelling the number of airmen in the room, and congratulations on your appointment. Major General Alenka Emek, Elmenk from Slovenia. Alenka, not only do I congratulate you on your appointment as the Chief of Defence Staff of Slovenia, but you've now made history in our alliance as the first woman Chief of Defence, and many, many congratulations. So I wish all of you the very best for your appointments. You take up your posts at a very important time in the Alliance, and we all look forward to you bringing your ideas to our discussions. We as an Alliance have troops deployed all over the globe, serving away from home and in difficult and arduous conditions to provide security, peace and stability to over one billion citizens of our world. This year, 2019, marks 70 years since the creation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Those years have seen many changes and many challenges, from the Cold War throughout its duration to the Balkans Wars to the 9-11 attacks and our involvement in Afghanistan. Challenges from state and non-state actors combine both traditional and non-traditional methods, and we as an alliance must counter them. To make certain that our primary responsibility of protecting allied populations and our territory is met, and that any potential adversary is in no doubt of our will and our determination. This committee, the military committee, is the most senior military authority in NATO, and we, as a collective, provide strategic military advice to the North Atlantic Council. This advice from 29 Allied Chiefs of Defence gathered around this table this morning brings to the Alliance a wealth of experience and expertise. We are responsible for translating political decisions and guidance into military strategy and recommending measures considered necessary for the defence of the Alliance. Over the next day and a half, we will focus on our strategic challenges and developments, our resolute support mission in Afghanistan, including Pakistan and the regional security situation, our Kosovo force mission and the Western Balkans, our deterrence and defence posture and NATO-Georgia relations. Today's session begins with a meeting with the Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, which allows us to hear from the Secretary General himself his expectations for this year and allows for a frank exchange of views. And I know he's looking forward to your questions this morning. Our second session focuses on NATO's strategic challenges, specifically looking to the future. This will lead us onto a conversation on strategic developments to go into detail in our forthcoming military strategy, the NATO command structure adaptation, and the status of the Alliance Readiness Initiative. We must continue to ensure the Alliance deterrence and defence posture remains credible, coherent, and resilient. Therefore, it is of strategic importance to increase our response, heighten, reduce our readiness, and improve our reinforcement capability. The adapted command structure enhances, strengthens the relationship to the NATO force structure headquarters and national headquarters. And, of course, our command structure is unique to this alliance. We must, therefore, ensure our command structure remains robust, agile, and fit for purpose to take quick and decisive action. 
As we sit here as the Chiefs of Defence, 20,000 military personnel are engaged on NATO missions around the world in complex ground and naval operations and air operations. And we must, as we have just remembered, the losses we suffered, remember them. Therefore, at our first session is dedicated to those missions and commitments focusing on resolute support and our operational partner, with our operational partner colleagues. We receive briefings from the Deputy Commander, Lieutenant General Salvatore Camporeale, on behalf of General Scott Miller, and our Senior Civilian Representative in Afghanistan, Ambassador Cornelius Zimmerman, on the current political and military situation and discuss NATO's future engagement. Our commitment to Afghanistan is unwavering. The security situation remains challenging. Nevertheless, the Afghan National Defense Security Forces are working very hard to secure their country and deny a safe haven to terrorists. We have a dedicated session on Pakistan with our friend and Pakistani colleague, General Mahmoud Hayat, and we'll receive a briefing from him on his perspective of the regional security situation and discuss the potential for future cooperation. Tomorrow, we'll begin with a session dedicated to warfare development and the delivery of common funded capabilities. And Supreme Allied Commander Transformation, General Andre Lenata, Andre, welcome, is here and he will brief us to provide further direction and guidance. We will then turn our attention to Georgia, meeting with our Georgian friend and colleague, General Vladimir Chachibea, and focus on his recent achievements, the security situation, and of course, the way ahead for our partnership. Our final session of the day tomorrow will be on the Kosovo Force and the Western Balkans. Following intelligence and operational briefings, we as Chiefs of Defence will provide recommendations and suggested way forward. NATO as an alliance has worked hard to keep Kosovo and the region safe for over 18 years through our K4 mission, now approximately 4,000 troops, and through our assistance and advice, which helps to build the capacities of the Kosovo security force and civilian institutions. So the security and stability of the Western Balkans remain paramount to NATO, and of course we have a strong relationship with all allies, friends, and countries in the region. Throughout this meeting, in each of our sessions, we'll be supported by our strategic commanders, Sakur, General Scaparotti, Mike Welcom, and Sakti, General Andre Lenata, who will both provide military strategic assessments on the issues we discuss. Thank you, and if I may now, please invite the media to uh, leave the room as we move to our opening session.